What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Battle Belongs podcast, episode eight of season two. I'm Colton. I'm PJ. Did you forget who you are? I feel like we have to say that because if you're listening for the first time, they don't know whose voice is. That's whose. true. That's true. That makes I feel sense. like we have to kick that off. And if if it's your first time listening, I encourage you to watch it. Go to YouTube. There's seven there. other episodes you can play catch up. There's a whole season one as well. If you want to just see me. Probably a, bit, probably a better season. No. Yes. Um. So I got this new jacket, right? I got it yesterday. I got it at Ross. And here's the thing. I really like it. But do these look like pearls? It looks like something that you get on a tuxedo shirt. I can't decide if it's a woman's or not. Did I buy a woman's jacket? Maybe that's something for the viewers to decide. But here's the thing. The buttons, the way you can't really see the buttons. Oh yeah, I doubt. You have um, to like put a bright. picture on. on I really hope that this looks good. We don't have my staff quit. It doesn't say women's or men. I uh, in it's elementary Levi's. school, my mom, like my mom, used to like hang my clothes, do the laundry and stuff. So she put a like it looked like a warm up <laughs> jumpsuit, like basketball. What is happening? She put it in my closet. I wore it. It was like a matching. Jacket and pants. Is it silky? And I went home that day. My older sister was like, PJ, what are you wearing? And I was like, just something that was in my closet. She came over. The tag said pretty girl on it. <laughs> I feel like that's really on par for you. <clears throat> what makes th- sense. What did you say? We were at the game tonight. PJ announced the Conway Middle game. And you said something about like when you were in, you were in high school football team. I forget. I feel like it was along the lines of that. Like, your stupidity. <laughs> Not that I could think of. I can't remember what it was, but it was it was questionable. Yeah, half the things I do are questionable. Very true. So, Anyway, but I don't know. The, the buttons, the way buttons is on the men's side, because did you know that women's buttons are opposite of ours? I didn't know that. Yeah. So that is a men's jacket. jacket. I believe so, but... The pearls look kind of feminine. Where's the red thing? It's Levi's. Yeah, it's a, oh, okay. So Levi's denim jacket, guess how much? Seven dollars. Wow. Good for you. I was gonna say forty. Bar- no. No, I do not shop like that. I bargain shop. But my thing was I was gonna paint it. I was gonna paint it like a Sean and Claire on the back of it because I'm going to JMU this Thursday, which is why we're filming tonight and my staff quit. Your staff because oh, they weren't getting about like Raina and them. Yeah, because they weren't getting paid probably. Yeah, right now it's actually currently we we just got done announcing a controversial ending to a middle school football game overtime win for the Ainer Blue Jackets over the Conway Tigers, um, twenty eight twenty two. If you're watching this, this is now three days past, which is why I'm wearing a Conway shirt. I literally bought this today. Nerd. Yeah, I think that's where <laughs> our kids one day will end up going though. Not Loris. Mm. Hmm. You got to start working on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. To send too. kids to school, you first have to you have, have, to have kids. children. Yeah, Jordan, Are we kicking off with questions first, or do you want to? Yeah, nice little icebreaker. I've already got okay. mine too. One deep, one shallow. I don't know if I have a shallow one. What's your deep one? You want to start with deep? Yeah. All right. What's the Lord teaching you right now? Oh gosh, patience. Patience in where you are. Um, finding content. Contentness is that a word? Contentment. Contentment. That's it. Um, I feel like I have all these aspirations. Like I know what I want to do. I know what I feel like I'm called to do. Like throughout my life, but like just getting there, it feels like it's taking forever. And I think we talked about this before. Like I'm just waiting for like a door to open or me like. I got, my a, I got a hot it. take on calling. Okay. Not like a bad one. I think your calling, though, is to Christ. Mm -hmm. Like you were called to him, and now, and this is the the controversy that Christians have in in America, what I see, is that we take calling and we abuse it in the manner of like, oh, am I called to um, start a podcast, called to do this line of work, and and this calling where that, that we're stretching so far and wide when realistically the ultimate purpose in life is to glorify Christ. And so... Yes, I, I don't think it's terrible language to say a door's opening. Um, I, I've used that 
before mm-hmm. like you know a door opened at, at Langston for me to be here and uh, we see the fruit of that I, I you know I think the Lord's evident in those things but I do think calling like where you are uh, the Lord teaches us things and that we should just be standing on that firm foundation because he doesn't change and mm-hmm. so even if you kept on where you were like for the rest of your life when you stood before God he's still going to say Colton well done well done you know that that's a little optimistic, but in the moment it doesn't feel that great. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Anytime we're walking through the valley, we never see the mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the outside. But we know who's leading see. us. Come on, and we walking. know who the battle belongs to. And he's walking hand in hand with us. Amen. You should just start a sermon right here. We got one. So, what is the Lord teaching you? Mm. I think right now what the Lord is teaching me, or just showing me right now, is just a heart for discipleship. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, me and a, a buddy of mine have been just talking about, like we, we've we been discerning some some stuff, just like with, uh, and this this could be a whole other podcast, like the gift of, of uh, like where do we fall in line with uh, gifts like prophecy and tongues and all that. And we and we started diving into the Holy Spirit and then we started diving into like how, how does God speak if, if it's solely scripture, which is like we, we hear God by scripture alone. Like, do we believe God uses people and things to um, show us things in this world? And I, and I, I think yes. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the gift of like that again, whole another episode: tongues and 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 prophecy. I mm-hmm. I don't. Um, I got a whole story. Yeah, that we'll save that one. I think that I think I think that's when we'll have Brett on the podcast. Um, Brett Williams. Brett is his idol that he's really struggling with. I wouldn't say struggle. That sounds he's just like horrible. he's just that person. Like he's discipling me. Like he he's he. I I love the guy, Brad. If you're watching this, I hope I'm like you one day. Um, because you're like <laughs> you're like Jesus, man. I you're can't. being like Jesus. I'm not saying he is Jesus. Well, we did see Jesus play in a football game tonight. Jesus, Jesus. I thought it was na- his name on the sheet was Jesus, but to, my wife reminded me. Make sure you say Jesus. Uncultured guy over here. Um, but anyway, discipleship in the manner of, man, I just have a heart for it right now. I think there's a lack in the big C church of discipleship. I think we 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 sometimes throw that on um, a certain program that, that maybe churches do, and I, I just think it's intentional um, growth with A or other believers. And so... Uh, what we're doing right now with our book, I think Barnabas, like, I just want to be like Barnabas. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. well, when I was reading that, I didn't think that's that's who that was. For some reason, I kept thinking of Barabbas. Is that the guy that they chose over? Yep. She, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, I was what like, Jordan was minute. telling me. She's like, You mean Barabbas? I'm like, No, there's a Barnabas. I do remember hearing, we Barnabas, just don't, we don't read a lot about Barnabas. Um, he did train up John Mark, though. Um, like, him and Paul had a disagreement. He took John Mark with, and it was over John Mark, and he took John Mark with him. And, and actually, Paul, in his one of his last letters, wrote like, "Bring John Mark." Like he was the one that was mad at him, but he was like, "Bring him, to, like you know, bring him al- along for the race that that God has has placed in front of us." So, very cool story. But I'll give you my shallow question, and then I'll let you ask yours. It, unless okay, you I don't even know it. my shallow question. Yeah, I have a deep look. One, who's unprepared of? this week? Yeah. Well, sorry, my we shallow it up to question Tuesday. is not. Not fast food like all together, but in Conway, what is your go to fast food late at night? Oh. In Conway. Yeah, just because like where we out. live. Cookout? I mean the only I mean, time I'm in Conway at night is like Sunday night. Pickleball. But tonight <laughs> we're in we're in Conway tonight. Tonight I went to McDonald's. And if you're watching from McDonald's in Conway, South Carolina, I have a bone to pick with y'all. <laughs> I'm, it's too long of a story to share, but I waited and waited and waited, and then my order was wrong, and I didn't want pickle or onion, and you know it looked like y'all just put the whole onion on my burger. And I actually <laughs> hate pickles more than anything else in this world. See, I like mayonnaise. I like pickles, just not like on a burger. Yuck! But onions, no. Mine is Taco Bell. That's where you were, and you left yep. me here for 15 straight minutes. Yeah, it did take a long time, but I'm not going to fault them for it. I mean. It is what it is. We're here now. And we did eat. It was good. I, I do like McDonald's eaten. at late at night, though. I think cookout would be... At like night? 
I think cookout's just good because it's cheaper and it is. I actually don't like their food though. I don't mind it. I, I but like, like I get a quesadilla tray there, so I'd rather have a chicken quesadilla from Taco Bell if I had to choose. Word makes sense. I didn't yep. even know there was a Taco Bell here. Yep, um, right outside Planet Fitness. Interesting. Smart on their part. <laughs> okay, my deep question. Um, I don't know if I've asked this one before, but when you get to heaven, if you could ask God, God one thing that is not like spiritual, because I know you would ask, like, why me? That would be your question. Like something not spiritual, what one question would it be? <laughs> so, like, this is, like, totally... Because we're, I don't think we're going to have questions, even though we all That's why I said if you Yeah, could. yeah, I know, I know. Um, don't dig too non-spiritual, deep. Non-spiritual, just a general question to God. <laughs> I would ask him, like, why he made me like and dislike the things that I do in this life. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm, I've always been curious. I'm like, I can't sometimes control these things. I'm like, why? Why, why do I? I like why? Football? Why, Lord? Why did you make me the way that I am? I feel like that's kind of spiritual. I, Mine, in a way. I don't even know if I can say this one. I mean, it's not bad, but <laughs> we talked about it when we went to the Penn State game in the car. Do you remember? We didn't go to a Penn State game. <laughs> oh, West Virginia. <laughs> For some reason, I thought that was a different game. Um, like West Virginia, so it is. West. Okay, we <laughs> talked about it in the in in the car. Why? What? <laughs> Why do we poop? Oh, um, probably a result of sin. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was your answer in the car. In like ten I have minutes to say that because I don't. I hate that women do. Okay. <laughs> Sexist here. No, it's not even that. It's just like I no, like I just that. don't get it. Like, couldn't there have been a better way for like humans to everything just, to like flow through? I mean, it's time consuming. It's gross, and then you have people like Garrett who have to work and <laughs> day long. That's true. Well, without it, we wouldn't have plumbers. I think they would have been okay with that. <laughs> I think they could have been like, well, I could. Well, that's a lot of work now. I mean, it, it makes, makes some money. Makes so. money, but I don't know. Um, that's my question, but we took like 10 minutes to talk about that topic in the car um, on the way to the game, and mom was like, okay, I think that's enough to talk about. Yeah, I agree with her. Human, and then I don't like you're it. like throwing fits. <laughs> I don't like it. I, like, that's my one thing about having a child one day. I think I'll He's holding it. it in right now, too. <laughs> Do you know? All right, moving on. I don't Do you have know. a shallow question? Um... um uh, what's been like a highlight of this year so far? That's more of a shallow question. I don't. I don't got one. Highlight of this if year. You could be uh, a moving, we've moved into our house. That mm-hmm. was a massive highlight. It, it. I felt rich. Yeah. You have because I have a, a very house. nice house. In very nice land. Yes, it was a gift that we had land and a very land. nice view. Great view in the backyard. And you can build. Um, we can. Um, like a house for me. Things just cost money. What? Huh? What's a highlight for you this year? Um, <laughs> Coming here. I, I knew that answer. So. My low light, meeting you. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. So, again, I'm baking, y'all. Applications for a podcast co-host. Send them in. This was my last straw. And this is my last episode. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I'll have Bryce on the podcast. You know, those might be two to three hour podcast episodes. Hey, that's a lot of content. We'll yeah, he's a good that. cameraman. He was. We had a good time. So we were at the Trump rally or Trump Town Hall Friday in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He did great. Got a lot of decent content that we're pumping Caleb. out. As well. Caleb was my business card person. Shout out to Caleb. Every time I'd finish an interview, he'd be like, so you can find this at Battle Belongs Podcast. Very shy, but we're opening him up a little bit. Yeah. I like that. What are we talking about today? Like, we've just been spitballing here for the last 20 minutes. Well, you wanted to talk about, like, I don't know, something really spiritual. And then I was like, I I was reminded (laughs) that this was a Christian conservative podcast. And sometimes I forget that. But the election is... 
Yeah. If you're watching this Friday, 26 days, correct? I think, because I think today's 29. Today's 29, so it's 28, 27. Yeah, 26. It's exactly one month from the day that we're filming this, I which makes hearing, me sick. Well, I keep hearing a lot of talk about, like, this is the most important, I think you even said the most important election Kimberly said ever. it last week. So why, like, my question is why? Yeah. Why is this different than any other um, election we've had? I think there's we always talk- been controversy in the yeah. world. I think we talked about this one before. It's like just a complete crossroads of the direction that we're going to take as a country. It's either we're going to take freedom or we're going to take socialism and con- communism. And I think there are just two vast different platforms that are on the ballot this year. Uh, socialism, where everyone you know gets everything by the government or you have the individual responsibility to have the American dream, live out the American dream, and build your own American dream with the Republican Party, Trump, whatever it may be. And then on the other hand, you know, they just want war. They want to kill babies. They want to let everyone into our country, taken away from the hardworking Americans that live every single day just trying to live that American dream, yet we're giving these people free things. And we were at that that town hall uh, the other day, and there was a lot of Hispanic people and Latino people there. And I was asking them, like, what do you really care about this election? They said the economy, the border uh, specifically. And it kind of, like, made me wonder, like, why do Latinos and Hispanics really care about the border? And they said, well, because they're coming over here and destroying the American dream that they work so hard to get to America for the legal way. Yeah. And I think that's just, like, the two different ideologies that we're going to go down. And they understand um, the countries that have fallen to communism and socialism. Um, you have the Cubans. My boss at CPAC is Cuban. My last name is Cuba. You're still white. This is also true. <laughs> but she's uh, she's Cuban. Her family left Cuba, um, fled from Castro, and they understand what it looks like before a country falls into communism mm-hmm. and socialism. And they'll tell you, that America is heading in that direction, and if Kamala Harris wins, that's the direction that we're headed under her. I was thinking earlier too about um, about illegal immigrants in a manner of this, because I think we need to preface this specifically. Like, as a believer in Christ, like I do look at them as human beings, and mm-hmm. I do have a as we should for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we need to also understand, because this is what the left tries to push, like they are people too. And and yes, they are correct in that manner. However, we also understand that there are, uh, there are, there is a proper way to go about things. And so I was thinking just in them in that manner, like I don't, I don't look at them as like, like I hate them or Mm -hmm. I uh, like, I, I look at it in a way of like the same way I would look at sin in, in the manner of this, like there is grace offered, Christ has forgiven us for it, but there are still consequences that we face in this world. And like mm-hmm. for them to illegally do something, to illegally come into this country, there are consequences. Like I still care about you as a person, but if you're going to do it the wrong way, like there, there's you, you are paying for those consequences. It's almost like love the sin or hate the sin type yeah. aspect. Um, we have laws in this country for a reason, but we also have legal ways to get here. And, you know, for those who are... We are a late... Like, we've seen our country, like, become lazy. Yeah. And maybe that's also the case over there, where oh, it's like, absolutely. let's just hop the border. Let's not go through all the paperwork. And, 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 and I don't know what that process looks like, so don't, you know, don't hear me at, hear me wrong on that. But Yeah, but we also have, like, process for, um, like, emergency people. Like, I don't know, they're fleeing a country that is in war right now. You know, you have asylum seekers um, who are actually coming over here for legit emergency concerns that they might die if they stay in their home country. Mm. And we have a process for that. And thank God that we do because, you know, not everyone is blessed. We are extremely blessed to be born in America that we don't even have to come here. We were born in America and we got to live the American dream. But there are people overseas who don't get that opportunity um, and who do have to flee, but the majority of the people who are coming over are not asylum seekers. They'll they'll claim asylum so that they can get through the process and you know get all the benefits, but they are just coming over here to steal our jobs. And the crazy thing is, we pay these people. We, they come over here illegally. 
They don't have their visas. They don't have a green card. They don't have any paperwork. Yet the American government allows people to hire them and then work and then pay them less because they'll work for less. That just blows my mind. I think that goes along with like the whole laziness thing, that we don't want to pay the people what they deserve. There are hardworking Americans who would die to have a job right now, mm -hmm. um, yet they are just coming over here and taking them. Yeah. But I guess that kind of ties into like the whole topic. I kind of want to discuss how how important it is for Christians to be standing up for their values, standing firm on their faith, and I think it just all ties in together, like politics, culture, and faith. Yeah. I think the Bible's a political book um, in a sense that it dictates everything that we should believe. As it should. Um, and how our laws should be made. And I think, you know, we, we saw all this persecution in biblical times, but Americans, American Christians, and just Christians throughout the entire world are still being persecuted today, and no one's really talking about it. Um, we're just kind of pushed under the rug and being told that, like, oh, keep your or keep your faith out of politics. What's your take mm. on that as a whole? And then we'll dive in. Yeah, I think one common mis mistake and misunderstanding a lot of Christians make is that, well, yeah, I should keep... Um, I don't want the government to come into, the, like, they look at separation of church and state, they're like, I don't want the government to come into the church, so I'm not going to put my my faith into politics. Some, that leads into not voting at all. And I think that's the wrong, I think that is the wrong way to go about it. And I think persecution in today's culture is a lot different mm -hmm. than what we see in biblical times, especially in America. Like you just talked about, we were, we were blessed. Um, and I think... Um, tying that into laziness as well, we see a common, common uh, laziness in faith when it comes to such things. Like when important topics come up, when when things that that need to be talked about are uh, are not being talked about from the Christian standpoint, because we're like, well, we you know we trust in God, we just want to sit back and and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. um, then I think there's an issue there. I don't. So I guess my question, like, are we just breaking this down, like? Yeah, kind of. Well, I was going to ask you, like, I guess I should have started this question first. Like, which group, religious group, do you think is being persecuted the most throughout the world? Christians. They are. I actually didn't expect that. I was thinking, like, maybe the Jewish people, but they're not. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, like, where all the media attention goes to. Uh, we can't trust media in the first place. Absolutely. Um, so I was just like doing a little bit of research, and Christians are currently the most persecuted religious group globally, um, according to different reports and studies from different organizations. Um, but you were saying like persecution here in America isn't kind of like the same thing as back then. Right. I agree, because I don't think people in America yet are, you know, just being murdered on the spot. I don't think Christian. it's as common. I think yeah. it probably happens, but what from what I think from my standpoint, my perspective is this that Christians are being persecuted in the manner that we are being silenced mm -hmm. and we are are pretty much even how do I want to put this? Like I think the the world around us, the agenda being pushed is is causing a a flip a a a um almost like a, a flip switch in their minds where uh, they're, they're, they're hearing all these ideologies and they're, and they're hearing about, you know, love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor, love is love, love is love. Woke Jesus. Yeah, and, and, and they're hearing that, and it's, and it's appealing because there's no death to self there. There's no, there's no standing firm on your faith. There, there's, it's, not a, it's not a hard thing to do when you paint Jesus into an image of what you want him to be rather than the God that he is. That's who good. promise that we are going to carry across, who promise we're going to face persecutions of many sorts. And in America, we are facing a, a persecution of being silenced and a wokeness that uh, and an agenda being pushed. And, and sadly, a lot of Christians are falling into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I get sidetracked, remind me about that because I have a point to make. Okay. Um, but, you know, there are other Christians all around the world who are actually still being yes. murdered. 
um, on the spot just for being Christians. Um, Open Doors USA reported in 2023 that 5,621 Christians were killed for their faith worldwide, and 90% of those are coming in Nigeria. Mm. And so that's 5,014 Christians were murdered just last year in Nigeria. Um, and it's being led by uh, attacks by extremist groups like Boko Haram um, and Fulani militants. And then you also have Pakistan who um, came in second with death or murders against Christians just for their faith. Um, mob attacks and lynchings have increased in Pakistan. So I think, you know, back to the point of like being blessed here in America, we don't see that here. Um, I think that would kind of break out an entire civil war if it did. But all these countries, these Islamic countries, these countries that are ran by uh, jihadists or just like these different radical tribal things where they don't have like an established government. They're just ran by whoever. Um, And then you see like in Afghanistan after the Taliban took over under Joe Biden, thanks for um, his pathetic withdrawal um, from Afghanistan. After the Taliban took over, you saw more Christian persecution in that country as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But to your point of the whole being silenced um, by and through social media and things of that nature, I had someone tell me the other day that they don't feel like they now this isn't for verbatim they don't feel like they have to vote until they feel like the one side is taking god away from them or trying to erase god and i was like have you paid attention what has happened the past 15 years they've taken god out of schools you can't pray. You you can't say the Lord's Prayer in schools anymore. They've taken the Bible out of schools, um, but they'll leave in books where you know you have basically pornography in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you cannot you cannot have any anything to say that goes against um, this gender ideology that is being pushed in schools. Now yeah. we had gay marriage legalized. Yep. which destroyed the sanctity of marriage in biblical aspect. And God forbid anyone said anything about that and pushed back against that. You got a lawsuit like the baker in Colorado did for baking, not wanting to bake a wedding cake because two men wanted to yeah, you know, try to push and push and push. And push. Down, right? right, so I was like, they are taking God away, and they are trying and to erase the, God. But the flip side of that, too, is they're, they're arguing that, that Christians are, are the ones that are unloving because they're standing firm on what they believe. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, that's a twi- like that's the thing, is like they're twisting words. They, mm-hmm. they're, it, it's like people that take the Bible out of context. Like they are taking things out of context because it's not fitting into their agenda. Right. And so then they're like, oh, it's a hate crime. It's hate yeah. speech. And I feel like when this does happen, a lot of Christians get scared. They go into yes. hiding. They don't feel like that they should stand up. So w- what would you say to someone who would come up to you and be like, you know, PJ, I am really, I really don't agree with this. I'm nervous about it, but I just don't feel like I can stand up or say anything because I might lose my job. I might get a F in the class. I might get kicked out of my college. What's that What's that uh, message to them? I, I, I think I would, I would start by asking, like, man, like, who is Jesus to you then? Mm-hmm. Like, how are you viewing God? Because if you're viewing him as just a piece of your life that's giving you peace and love and joy and all the fruits of the Spirit, then I believe that you need to really open your Bible and Mm -hmm. read it for what it says. Because again, there is a promise that if the world hates you, um, it hated him first. And so it's inevitable Right. Uh, we we look at the disciples. We we see how they were how they were killed in this world, crucified upside down, dragged in the streets, um, thrown into boiling uh, oil. Like I mean, all these things. And do you think that they were like, oh man, I'm really scared. Mm. I'm really scared about like you know what might happen to me if I stand firm on the gospel. When in America, I mean, you can't you you're scared to go knock on your neighbor's door and ask them if they know who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. So my my problem is more or less just with the reality that I don't think some people have ever been challenged. Uh, I'm not saying to go out there and start street preaching anywhere and everywhere. Like there, I think there's a proper way and manner of going about things, but I, I do think that we are weak minded when it comes to uh, the the foundation of the gospel that that we are called to, and and just like the reality of 
because you've been comfortable in your pew every Sunday, you don't think there's an action step that you have to take Monday through Saturday. Go after them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go I, after them. I, did, I wrestle with that a lot, just like, um, cause I, and, and like, that's a prayer that I think commonly, um, we, we should pray like for boldness that mm-hmm. I'm not, yeah. I'm not looking to pick a fight, but I, I have to be ready to, for, like, are you prepared mm-hmm. for war? Yeah. I, I feel like I'm just so sick and tired of people just being so complacent with everything that is happening. It, Kimberly said it last, last week on the podcast that 2020 was like a gift from God in a sense that it was an awakening for people to realize what's actually happening in this country where they try to close churches and they did close churches in states like California that, and, and that, people did nothing. Exactly, and that's that's one way we were persecuted because what, what they did was they used a a sickness and an illness. And don't get me wrong, COVID COVID happened, and and people died and people were sick. Um, I, I do believe that, but I mm-hmm. do believe it was used as a as a way to um, stop the church from gathering with one yeah. another. I, yeah. Well, thankfully, and to that point of stopping people from gathering, now we have. You know this virtual, oh. you know live stream church, which is great for people like on vacation things or um, outside it's the not, country. It's not, it's not the local church. Yeah, it, I, you great. talked about this a midweek on the importance of the local church. But also, just like I agree with you, like those that are are, are shut ins, um, those that are are fighting for this country, mm-hmm. um, militaries, um, and all those things. Like those are what it's for. But it's not for you to just. Uh, create an, a, a consistency in your life where you're like not get because it's a gathering of the saints. Mm-hmm. It's a I think I th- I I believe that so many Christians don't know how to stand up for for the gospel because they are disconnected from a local body. Yeah, and we saw thousands and thousands of churches die and basically just close their doors for good after through 2020 and after 2020 they never opened back up. And my generation, your generation. We're the least religious group. I think we're like the least Christian. Least religious and most anxiety prone. Yeah. Why? Because we don't know how to deal with it. How would you suggest dealing with things like that and like mental health? Because that's like a crisis that we have. Hmm. Simple. Well, the simple answer. If you want to go to scripture, then it is cast your, um, your, your cares on the Lord. And if we rest in the fact that he's already died and resurrected and he is coming back. He remains the same. I think we have peace in this world, but we focus on what we can see. We don't walk by faith. We walk by sight. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it ties into the whole social media too. I think you've even said before, social media is a great thing to, you know, get our views out there, share the gospel and things like that. But it has absolutely destroyed society. And I feel like the Christians have it stood up against it. We still have pornography running on every social media platform, basically, and Christians, we're just content with it. Um, we're not trying to pass any laws to get it banned. Just things like that have absolutely destroyed people. Yeah, I think a lot of Christians just, they, they want to live, they want the American dream. Um, and I know you mentioned this earlier, and I and I, I do too. Like I I, I want a freedom in America. I want to be able to live my life, but I am also to prepare. I am prepared as a Christian to to die to myself and live sacrificially. Um, but uh, I also think that we play a part. Um, what I'm trying to get at it basically is this: is like we we seek that American dream, and if it doesn't go our way, then a lot of Christians are just like. Well, what what do we do now? Like, is God really trustworthy? Is He so- sovereign? Mm-hmm. Who are like who are we to to paint this image that He isn't still in control? Yeah, and I kind of want to like tie this into like this upcoming election though, because like we said, we're less than a month away. It makes me sick even thinking about woo. it. But when you ask, no, not woo. It's <laughs> My gosh, what are we going to do for election night, number one? Am I coming to your house so you can just, like, pray over me? Are you going to be like that lady in the 2016 election? No! I hope not. I was not like that in 2020. Here, I will say, before um, my sanctification process, I'll be be real with y'all. 2020, that presidential election, I had things to get me through it. Mm. It was liquid. (laughs) I know where you're going. Liquid courage. 
but God, but God being rich in mercy. So now this time around, we're just going to have a lot of we're going to be praying. prayers, prayers in battle. Belongs. I think that's be I think if you're watching this, that is the perfect way to spend the election night is in a posture of prayer and even fasting. Fasting is a biblical concept. A lot of people have um, not practiced. I know I will be working. I don't know where I'll be. That's another thing that scares mystery. me. In 2022, I had to go to New York I don't York even City. know if I'll watch. I know how bad that's... I know you hate hearing me say stuff. Like, the other night, he was like, are you going? Are you coming over to watch the election? I was like... Or the debate? I was like, I'm going home, <laughs> and I'm playing NCAA. Um, I'm but I like the con- You have, like, strong contentment, though. I mean, I do, too. Like, yeah, in the sense of whatever happens. And I think, like... I know that, like... I think I get... Um, anxious about certain things, but I I think it's a process uh, of walking with Jesus where it's like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, whether it's Kamala Harris or Donald Trump as president. Preferably Donald. Yes. And don't get me wrong. Like I am voting for Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, That'd be what a mind blowing reality would be for you. If I was like, I'm voting for Kamala Harris on this conservative podcast. Um, I think I'd, I might get censored for that. The thing, like, I'd strangle you. <laughs> I'd strangle you back you on by yourself, way. like, "Hey guys, so um, we had to take out the trash." <laughs> yeah. Um, but say it does go sideways, I'm gonna be okay. And but I there's a but, and my but is the fight isn't over. No, because I think I don't we're think still... the fight's ever gonna be over. Amen. Even if Donald Trump does win, like mm-hmm. we're still gonna be fighting. Um, and and praying for salvation for whoever's in office, I think that would be that's the craziest thing that we forget about is like whoever is voted in office, like God can turn their heart. Mm-hmm. He took that Paul was a normal human human being like you and I. We are just living in a different time frame. He persecuted Christians, and then he became the greatest missionary apart from Jesus ever. God uses imperfect people for his perfect plan. A- and I think man. he is using Donald Trump. Period. Well, to that note, Moses was a murderer. David was an adulterer. Paul persecuted Christians. Rahab was a prostitute. Jacob deceived. Samson was a womanizer. Peter Peter denied Jesus. Noah was a drunkard. Abraham was a liar. Jonah disobeyed God's command. Lot engaged in, mor- in immoral acts with his daughters. Judah sold his brother into slavery. Mm. And yet... They all had a redemption story. And they were all used by God Mm -hmm. in the greater purpose and greater good. This all ties in to this one reality. How you view God is the most important thing about your life because it will dictate every area of your life. And so the gospel is free, yet also it requires something of you, which is to give yourself up. Mm. Very good. So I cannot wait until, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen before the election that we actually dive into all these different issues and how... I can't wait till after why. the election's over so we can start talking about stuff I want to talk about. Hey, fine by me because I'm... Can I take a vacation first? I need about a week and a half. Do you want me to record one by my... Or when uh, season three happen for the Battle of Belongs? I don't know if we're going to end season two like before Christmas break that type. How many episodes do you think are required in this season for something like mm-hmm. this. I've seen people like do 30. I, I feel like say, it's like, I was going to say we should end it after the, uh, Hey, the fine debate. by me. And I take not like not the take election, break. not the debate. Oh, the election. Yeah. See, I don't, <laughs> this guy's just uneducated. I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm just here, man. <laughs> I'm here and I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, is that it? Like as far as like our topic tonight? Kind of. Yeah. Oh, because, well. I don't want to like dive into. More yeah, there's of it. realistically. I want three to four whole. more episodes before the election takes place, and I'm hoping to have a couple people on to talk about such things. Brett, who we just talked about, his idol tomorrow. Or if you're listening to this, it's already happened. He does what's called cookies and controversy, mm. and they are talking about how Christians should um, approach voting. Uh, for this election. Oh, that's period. his topic for that? So then he can be the perfect person to discuss. I tried to get him on here tonight, but he said, he's like me. He's like, man, I, I don't I don't know enough about politics, but I'm going to give it You part. don't have to. You don't have to know anything about politics. That's the thing. 
Tell them, don't get me wound up. You don't need to know anything about politics. You don't need to know what the different sides believe in a sense of you just need to know what the Bible says what does and the Bible then say figure and how does it out. With what's yes. in front of me? Then listen to each side and understand which side uh, believes what and how does it align biblically. Mm. I get so sick and tired of hearing Christians say, well, I don't know if I'm going to vote or I don't know who to vote for. What do you mean? It's crystal clear. Trump is not perfect. The Republican Party is not perfect. But my golly, have you seen the other side? And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Christians have a moral duty to preserve the most amount of good and to do good works in this world. I agree. And I think what better way to we are do called that? Steward. Yes. And how are you going to steward your country if you're either number one voting for someone that goes against biblical principles, or two? abstaining from that vote and allowing the possibility of someone to go into an elected office and destroy this country because, number one, they go against everything that the Bible stands for. It makes no sense to me. This is so simple, and it just baffles me that people don't understand it. Here's my final— it makes me sick! Here's my final thoughts. Um, if you're not engaged in a local church, get engaged with a Bible-believing mm. local church. Um, begin praying for this election and both candidates are all, I guess, all involved. There's, and there's the current two. administration. Yes. Lord knows they um, need it. Be praying, be fervent, like in that to say, I have a part to play. And three, understand that persecution is going to take place in the Christian life. And it looks different for everybody. It looks different in this country versus the next. It all falls under that category of persecution, so it's inevitable. But John fifteen eighteen through 20, I will read it. If the world hates you, you know it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep kept my word, they will also keep yours. So, it's going to happen. Christians, don't be lukewarm. Don't just sit back in the pew and wait for the next worship song. Get up. Realize that you have the armor of God. You have the sword being the word. And you have a part to play in this fight that we are up against. But the battle does belong to the Lord. Period. You just have to ask yourself that question of, yes, it's going to happen. What do I do about it? And there's only one right answer. It's stand up, be bold, and fight back. Yep. All right. And now, for the most important part. I, I just wait for you to say it. Of the podcast. All right. I'll make my picks first so there's no controversy. And plus, we have to notice, do that one last. Just so you know. The g- prime time? This one? Yep. Okay. Um, last week I, was I made my picks originally on the podcast episode. Took USC and Missouri. Yeah, this day wimp before the kickoff. So let me preface that I swapped to A and M and Ole Miss mainly just because of the analysts I was listening to, and um, I I decided to not buy into the USC hype for this weekend, and I'm glad I didn't because those were the only two games I ended up winning. So. Both of us went two and three this week. I would have won this week. Yes, he would have. He would have actually probably taken the lead. Oh. I would have been one down still. I was All right, down I'm going to kick off Penn State at USC, Southern Cal. Is it in the Rose Bowl? That's where no, they play? No, USC is not in the Rose Bowl. That's UCLA. Mm-hmm. It's in the Memorial. Uh, uh, the uh, We are, baby. The Olympic Stadium. We are number four in the country. This is our first road, big road test. And that's my team. So I'm going to pick them this week. I'm going to pick them in three weeks when we play Ohio State. Give me Penn State over USC, even though there's a high chance we lose that game. What is that? You don't know what this sign is? That's a peace sign. No, it's the fight on Trojan sign. Are you really picking USC? I have a gut feeling about this one. Did they beat Michigan? Good thing I Michigan came back and won. Michigan, Michigan came back and won. Minnesota beat them. At Minnesota. USC. The fake USC. 
that's controversial. Down south, everybody would agree with you. Texas at Oklahoma, Red River rivalry. Hook them, baby. Texas is number one for a reason, and they're going to stay number one after this week. Quinn is back, too. Oh, you get really good. I will over. never, I will never pick you. Look, Lawson Benton, Ultra Benton. Y'all talk about how I pick with my heart. Look, I cannot not pick with my heart and then pick with my head and then watch the game because my heart is in the game. I want Texas to lose. I cannot stand Texas. Not going to. I hate hearing Texas is back. Do I think Texas Oklahoma, do I think Oklahoma is the better team? Absolutely not. But will I pick Texas? Absolutely not. Boomer sooner. I really actually have grown to like Oklahoma because I, could not stand them over the years. I still don't like them, but their fans are great. I like them because I, I did make time. that trip. Um, yes, so Ole Miss at LSU. Both teams not as impressive as we thought they would be at this they point in the season. Week. I am going to go with Ole Miss. Um, I just don't know if LSU has found their rhythm. I think Ole Miss is not as good as people have portrayed them to be. It is at LSU, and last year's game was um, hype. I mean, I think it was sixty-one fifty-five or something crazy. The score scoreboard. Um, Ole Miss ended up winning that game, and I think LSU was the favorite. L- Ole Miss is the favorite this season. I'm sticking with the Rebels. Do we know what the rankings are? Yeah, LSU has dropped. Ole Miss is either ten or eleven. I can check for you. Well, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Who has LSU lost to? They have lost to USC, the Trojans, in in Vegas. Yeah, and was that their only loss? I have a feeling so because they're still they should have lost to Carolina, which Ole Miss just oh man twenty four twenty four in the Liberty game right now. By the way, oh mm, with a minute left, um, you're going Ole Miss. I'm going Ole Miss. Yeah, LSU is four and one. Ole Miss is five and one. I don't like picking against Lane Kiffin. I picked against them last week, and that backfired. <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, I'm gonna be I, like, I, not so fast, my friend. I'm really butthurt that they fell victim to cancel culture, though, and changed their mascot to a shark, out of all things, in okay, Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, it was like Confederate, which I, I understand that sense. I'm but trying like, to figure out why Auburn. They're the Tigers, but they're or Eagle. Yeah, why Somebody is Crimson Tide an elephant? I'm not mad about that. I know you. I do either. love it. Yeah. So who are you picking? I don't know, but did you? Um, we were in church Sunday, and one of the worship songs said "Crimson Tide," and I was like, "Roll Tide." Sorry. Um, By the way, go Vandy. No, that was pathetic. I loved it, bro. I, I loved it. Um, the fire department dug the goalpost out of the uh, the the river. I want to go LSU. I'm gonna. We go are LSU. so far on two. Totally opposite side, opposite sides of that. This so time? far, three three games. Each. Yeah, well, three two weeks picks. in a row. You picked exactly what I picked. I didn't pick what you picked. You picked what I LSU. Picked. Kansas State at Colorado. Colorado making a different name for themselves this season. Don't know if they've really played anybody yet. Controversial win, not controversial. I mean, big win for them against Baylor on the last play of the game, or that sent it to overtime. But still, Baylor's not a, that great of a football program this season. The Big 12 they is kind of... They almost beat BYU. The Big 12 is still better than the ACC. Iowa State is undefeated. BYU is undefeated. Um, West, Virginia's, West Virginia usually picks up at this period of the year, so I'm curious to see how y'all pan out. I will be there. It's the Riot Bowl. And they're playing... They are wearing the blackouts, I just learned. Cole Rush, 8 yeah. p.m. kickoff. So I'm driving up. Are they going to West? Are they at West Virginia? Yes, yeah, so I'm driving up Thursday. Coastal plays at JMU, and then going to the West Virginia game Saturday. Number eleven Iowa State undefeated you under the lights. Sunday. We'll see. I might stay like a couple days and hang out with mom. Not you should sure. go to church on Sunday. Yeah, down here. No. <laughs> All right. Find another local body and go on Sunday. I have a church back there. Okay, go. Hmm. If West Virginia, I shouldn't even have to make this deal with you. I'm your pastor. I'm going to church either way. Go to church. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't want to see me. No, I'm. So, I thought your debate was whether or not you'd go to church if you stayed up there. No. Okay. 
I'm fine with that. I'm going to church either way. I just don't know if I'm going to stay. All right. Anyway. Kansas State. Kansas State, because we play them next week, and I that's at 7.30 as well. So I'm in the same predicament next week because I'm going to be traveling back up there. It's going to be a night game. Neil Brown, this is your chance. You want us to trust your climb? Win these two games. I don't trust your climb. Me either. But, but I'm not a West Virginia. But we're in the driver's seat for Arlington if you, if you do. Finally. Primetime. Game of the week. Ohio Wait, State. Wait, who did you pick? Kansas State. Okay. Ohio State at Oregon. Both. Ohio State was his Big Ten favorite beginning of the year. Mine was Oregon. Oregon has looked like not what I thought they would. They have squeaked out some wins, including against Idaho. <laughs> Is game but day I'm going? sticking to it. Give me the Ducks at home. Is game day going? Mainly because I hate Ohio State. Oh, sorry, Reina. But yes, game day will be there. They are going. I figured. Okay. I think. I I don't know because neither one of these teams have played anybody like worth watching mm-hmm. yet, and so we finally get a game this weekend and next. I, I my mouth is salvaging like with the college football slate that we have. Like it was hard to pick these five games. Yeah, I mean we thought last week was gonna be a dumpster Lackluster, fire, but and it was a dumpster fire in a great way. Okay, so, um, Ohio State Oregon. I liked right. Urban Meyer. Um, Raina's our little producer director. My grandfather's from Ohio. He was a little bit of an Ohio State fan. They have a special place. This in my one heart. I am picking with my heart because I think but, Ohio State's going to win, but I'm going with Oregon. But they are playing at Oregon. Oh, my. Under the lights, correct? Oh, my. Prime time. College game day. Yeah. But no. Go, Bucks. Why do you have that? Because I went toward Ohio State and I, I got a hat every, every uh, college I go to. I need to start bringing my helmets in here for our picks. Shove that thing on. Go no, Bucks. not that. Raina, I hope you're happy. I'm not. Please come back. Um, I do think Ohio State's going to win, but I can't pick them. I actually don't think Ohio State's going to win, but I will pick I them. Do, I will be picking them when we pick Ohio State-Michigan. Absolutely. And yeah. when they play Penn State. Die. That's in to yourself because that's what Christ weeks. tells us to do. Yeah, three weeks. We can both come off a bye week. I kind of hope Ohio State w- does win this week because if they lose, I am scared what they'll do to us. <laughs> um, I my only hope is this. Um, I just hope whoever is have fun. Whoever is picking when this game will take place, please do not. Make us big noon kickoff. We play terrible at big noon kickoff. You played pretty well against West Virginia. But second Ohio half. State, we need a whiteout game. We need it under the lights. We are in Happy Valley, and we need a W. So, Ohio State. <laughs> I think that was close enough for, like, a screenshot. Yes. Ohio State. Um is probably going to win this weekend, but I'm sticking with Oregon. Okay, so this game will be over by the time um, this airs, but Coastal or JMU? Coastal. Really? I can't pick against Coastal. Well, you could. I could. But that's my team. That's who I, That's my school I minister to. That's the, yeah, that's like the only tie that you actually to. have. You don't have a tie to anyone except Coastal. I... I don't mind Jamie. Though. Like uh, Jamie is one of those teams. I don't think you like can dislike because they came out of the FCS and they've been balling. Yeah, they're a rival though, old rival. Give me Coastal. Me too. Anyway, that wraps up episode eight of season two of Battle Belongs we Podcast. Will see you next, next week. week. Peace.